of this Carabinieri art squad and the main offices in the Palazzo Sant'Ignazio in Rome. And then uh, all the other major cities, particularly those involved in art, have offices and locations. Let's talk about U.S. customs, for example, because I know lots of you listeners are from the United States. So when I think of customs, I'm usually thinking about, oh, am I going to be able to take that uh, uh, prosciutto or piece of cheese into the United States for a gift? But the Customs Authority, the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection get involved in all aspects, not just stuff like foods that you're taking into the United States, but art theft, and they work closely with this Carabinieri unit here in Italy. So we think of, you know, border patrol is like immigration, but, you know, that extends to bringing animals illegally into the country and uh, trafficking animal skins. They also work with special agents of ICE, the Homeland Security. So it's a whole network of entities worldwide that try to prevent art and antiquities theft and illegal sale. So the latest presentation of looted goods in Rome was the fruits of Italy's decades-old effort to recover antiquities stolen from Italian tomb raiders. And Italy recently celebrated the return of about 600 antiquities from the U.S., including everything from bronze statues to gold coins, mosaics, and manuscripts that were valued at $60 million. And these valuable objects were looted years ago, and then they were sold to U.S. museums and collectors and galleries, and then only recovered thanks to the result of criminal investigators. And our current ambassador, Jack Markell, recently celebrated this return of 600 antiquities in a special celebration. Also last year, Italy celebrated the restitution of close to 300 antiquities from the U.S., including Etruscan vases and ancient Roman coins. And these artifacts had also been illicitly looted. As Ambassador Markel says in his commitment to return stolen loot to where it belongs, he says, we know that safeguarding this history requires care and vigilance, and this is why we do what we do. Also, some other items were returned from New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art, and some of the well-known New York philanthropists who donated artifacts to the, its collections that turned out to have been stolen. What was not included in this latest haul from the U.S. was the ancient Greek bronze statue, the Victorious Youth. And it's the subject of a decades-long court battle between Italy and the Getty Museum based in Malibu, California. This prize statue recently made headlines anew when the European Court of Human Rights strongly backed Italy's right to seize this statue, reaffirming that it had been illegally exported from Italy. It's still part of an ongoing investigation, and it's unclear whether it will be returned or not. Another item that was returned was a 4th century Naxos silver coin depicting the god of wine that was looted from an illicit excavation site in Sicily before 2013 and smuggled into the United Kingdom. And then somehow it ended up in New York last year as part of an investigation into a noted British coin dealer. And then back in 2023, the Italian Ministry of Culture says that artifacts that date back thousands of years and worth millions of euros were found, about 250 ancient artifacts. 
And among these precious artifacts are pots, paintings, and sculptures, some up to 3,000 years old. And several of the mosaics are worth tens of millions of euros. Most of these artifacts had been stolen in the 1990s and then sold through a series of dealers with one selection apparently being offered to the museum collection in Houston, Texas. Apparently, these artifacts were on display in the museum, but a spokesperson for the museum denied this and said they'd never been part of the collection. Sometimes, as in this case, the spokesperson said that the museum might be offered the artifacts as a gift, but instead they see kind of like a red light and realize something's off and they refer the donor to Italy's cultural ministry. And then the ministry looks into it and establishes the veracity of the true sale and who the rightful owner is. So what are some of the most noteworthy art thefts that we know about. Well, one certainly was the August 1911 theft of the Mona Lisa, stolen from the wall of the Louvre in Paris. And up until then, it wasn't that famous of a painting as it is in these days. It was really this theft that made it all the more famous. Basically, if you'd been standing outside the Louvre in Paris on the morning of August 21st, 1911, you might have seen three men hurrying away. They might have looked pretty tired because actually they had just spent the night in an art supply closet before stealing this painting. Then on the morning of August 21st, 1911, before the museum opened, they slipped out of the closet and lifted up this 200-pound painting off of the wall. They removed the frame and the glass case, and they stripped the painting out of the frame, rolled it up in a carpet, and then they hurried off to a train station in Paris where the three of them got an express train out of the city. You can read all about this in the Dorothy and Tom Hubler painting heist story in their book, The Crimes of Paris. And according to them, it was over a day before anyone even noticed the four bare hooks where the painting had hung. And again, I repeat that it wasn't that famous of a painting back then. So the guy who finally noticed that it was missing was a still life artist who had gotten himself set up to paint a copy of the Mona Lisa, but alas, it wasn't there. The artist wasn't necessarily concerned because right around that time, there was a project within the Louvre Museum to take photos of lots of the works. And for that, each piece had to be taken to the roof since cameras of the day didn't work that well indoors. So finally, this guy persuaded a guard to see how long the photographers would be busy taking photographs of the Mona Lisa. And then the guard came back and said, guess what? The photographers don't have it. So all of a sudden, it became an incredibly famous painting overnight because of its theft. After the Louvre announced the theft, the newspapers all over the world ran headlines about this missing, amazing painting masterpiece. So of course, as you can imagine, this heist became a national scandal because how could this possibly have happened? And then at one point, the American tycoon and art lover J.P. Morgan was suspected of commissioning this theft. Even Pablo Picasso was considered briefly as a suspect. Then, after a week-long shutdown, the Louvre reopened to mobs of people all anxious to see this spot where the painting used to hang. It was known as the Mark of Shame. But meanwhile, let's get back to these thieves. They had made a clean getaway, these three men. And they were three Italians, two brothers, Vincenzo and Michele Lancelotti, 
And the ringleader, Vincenzo Perugia. Perugia was a handyman who had worked in the Louvre and was involved in installing the protective glass around the Mona Lisa. So these three 